Holy crap, there have been a lot of Warhammer games lately, but few have been as good as Warhammer Chaos Bane. This action RPG has it where it counts, with fun classes, good boss fights, decent loot, and some terrible voice acting. But the feel of Games Workshop's dark fantasy universe is done right. The moment-to-moment -moment combat in Chaos Bane is some of the best I've gotten my bloodstained hands on in recent times. Whether you're using a controller or a mouse and keyboard, moving, slashing, casting spells, and leaping through hordes of cultists to fire off a barrage of arrows all feel precise and impactful. Encounters have a satisfying flow with a good variety of enemies, though there aren't a lot of elites with memorable or dangerous abilities you have to watch out for on the difficulties available at the start. They do show up when you unlock the higher levels, though, and the bosses are great on all settings. Taking on these hordes is a bloody, chaotic pleasure thanks to a choice of four very distinct and well-designed classes. Three of them are absolutely excellent, to the point that I had a really hard time picking a favorite. Elessa, the Wood Elf Scout, nimbly leaps from place to place, always staying on the move and benefiting from an energy recovery mechanic that encourages you to find and tag your wandering spirit friend every time he lights up. Bragi, the Dwarf Slayer, is the archetypical berserker. He builds up stacks of fury the longer he stays in combat to boost his energy regeneration as he rips through crowds of baddies. And Elantir? Oh, Elantir. This High Elf Mage may be the most fun I've had with a magic user in an ARPG, given his ability to take direct control of his spells using the spacebar or the left stick. This trick is extremely powerful if you master it, but it's a real mental exercise to maintain positioning of both a spell and yourself during a hectic brawl. Which is, you know, how playing as a damn sorcerer should feel. Then there's a uh, guy with a sword. I mean, he's okay. He's just not anywhere near as fun as the other three classes, especially in solo play where his defensive and taunt abilities slow you down more than they help out like they do in co-op. Sorry, Valen. The all-important itemization is pretty well done, though not anything close to revolutionary. I didn't come across a lot of gear that totally opened up new playstyles or gave me that feeling of going immediately from zero to hero but the stat choices I got to make were interesting without being overwhelming, and the clean, readable UI makes it very easy to compare different pieces. There may well be more game changers available beyond my 25 or so hours of play on the harder, unlockable difficulties where heroic quality items really start to pop up more often. The story is, well, it's Warhammer. Set about 200 years before Carl Franz and co. take the stage, Things are quite bad, as the forces of Chaos are mounting one of their greatest invasions ever. You'll get to interact with some cool figures from the lore, like Prince Teclis and Emperor Magnus the Pious, which is neat if you know who they are. You'll journey from the burning streets of Prague to the frozen wastes of Norska, where each map is full of personality accentuated by effective art, music, and sound design. There are some interesting twists and memorable side characters, too. Someone is probably going to try to sell you out to a demon lord at some point. It was mostly what I would expect. Not enough to keep me invested if the combat hadn't been as fun as it is, but it didn't get in the way of my enjoyment either. In the long run, I'll probably spend more of my time in the post-story modes like randomized expeditions and boss rush, so a less than spectacular story can be forgiven. presentation, however, can be Chaos Bane's bane at times. The voice acting, in particular, is inconsistent at best and actively painful in places. And not in the campy, scenery-chewing sort of way that a lot of Warhammer games have successfully embraced in the past. I'm talking so bad that I feel embarrassed on behalf of the actors. You are Waldo Erlanger. I have come looking for you because Clemt said- Alessa stood out as she's supposed to be a young, rebellious wood elf wanderer, but sounds like a tutting, reedy, middle-aged British woman you would get stuck behind in line at the store because she needs to speak to a manager immediately. And I think I might have figured out why. She is with Skraling at the old elven temple. I need a way to get inside. Did her voice just change to a guy there? 
One that sounds more like how I'd expect this type of character to talk. It seems like she was recast at the last second when they decided to make the character a woman, and some of the old male lines were left in by accident. And while I appreciate the attempt to not have the character select screen be a complete sausage fest, it seems rushed. All of the other player characters sound much more polished. I'd have done the same if that damn sorceress hadn't blasted me off my feet. They've been gone too long, Bracky. Either they've gotten lost in the tunnels. Warhammer Chaos Bane can stand proudly alongside some of the best games that have used the foreboding gothic old world as a setting. Action RPGs like this live and die based on fun combat and well-designed classes, and developer Echo Software really hit it out of the park on both of those counts. I look forward to hacking, blasting, and sniping my way through the demonic masses with three of my favorite warriors whenever I get the urge. And maybe I'll give Valen another shot at some point, too. You know, he seems like a good kid. For more Warhammer, check out our reviews of Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr, Warhammer Vermintide 2, and Total War Warhammer 2. And for everything else, stick with IGN.